Shalom, give me another page. Shalom, page 144,000, and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video, since we've been in the spirit of going back into what we call the breakdowns, interpretation, and various interpretations of the uh, Old and New Testament prophecies, uh, last night we had did you know, Revelation 14, 14 chapter. We had did a thing last week. I forget what we did uh, last week. But for the last month, month or so, we've been, uh, you know, camp closed. We do a you know, after camp, after camp classic. Well, but it should be classic. It's got a lot of minds together doing like different precepts. The precepts that you didn't think of that the brother would raise their hand, I got a precept and in their mind say, Yeah, that was a good precept, but you didn't think of it at that time. So that's called uh, brainstorming. Look that word up, brainstorming. Uh, you got a thing called think tanks. This Esau executes its plans. They have they have a plan. They plan the execution and they execute their plan. So their plan, their plan is to brain, their, their plan comes from brainstorming and think tanks. You got these people that are wise, intelligent, schooled, scholarly people, whether it be science or what have you. They get together and they deal with uh, these different scenarios and how to, uh, like in the military, if you go to like a military, University, like in New York, you have uh, West Point. You have West Point, but that's a trip. That's a trip. That's upstate New York. I was I went through there as a kid, but uh, it's military uh, university. And you graduate, and you become an officer in the military. So these guys that are majors. Captains, ultimately, uh, uh, ultimately uh, generals and so forth, brigadier generals. They they come out of that, that military com uh, college. I just mentioned one, and they know the, the history of uh, wars, even ancient wars. And uh, so they get these ranks. You got a guy that might be, you know, a nineteen. He might be a major. Then you got, you know, in the midst of war, you got these grunts, which are people that are drafted or they had to move up in the ranks. And um, the guys at the lower ranks are usually more battle tested. They might have come from the hood, you know. So anyway, you, in other words, you got to learn this. You got you to come. You got to come together. And you got to be in a sort of a military mind state, but a spiritual military mind state. You know, we're not here to get brothers together to go to the shooting range and, and all that. Not even the martial arts. We're just spiritual men. And our warfare is the scriptures. Understanding the scriptures, knowing how to, that's your weapon, the scriptures. And you go to war with the Christians, the various other groups that Jake uh, follows Islam, uh, uh, Christian, various uh, denominations of Christianity, the atheists, you know, you're going to have people that's going to give you some pushback. So when they give you the pushback, the weapon that you use is the scriptures, coupled with, um, you know, historical documents. So, you know, we do those classes mainly to go into the breakdowns because the hardest part about the Bible, the scriptures, is the breakdowns. You know, you can go to uh, Psalms, uh, 23rd Psalms, pretty much a self-explanatory. Any of these Psalms, and some of the Psalms, there are hidden meanings or double meanings to it. Um, like you read about King David, you know, King, when you read about King Saul, King David, King Solomon, you know, you're reading from uh, 
you know, uh, First Samuel, Second Samuel, uh, First Kings, Second Kings. You're reading from the Chronic Chronicles, which uh, First Chronicles one goes into uh, the genealogy of the, all the people in the Bible, and Esau is even mentioned there. Everybody that you see today on the planet come from one of three sons, Ham, Sham, or Jephthah. No exceptions. Everybody. Anybody that you see, they're either Hamites, Shemites, or um, Hamites, Shemites, or Japhites. And, you know, you got the, these people that call themselves the, the people of the God, of God, the Jays, the JJs, we call them the small hats. They'll pull out the anti-Semitic, which when they say Semitic, they're really supposed to say Shemitic. They're they playing with the word. It's because they're Semitic, because they call themselves Semitic, but we're Shemitic. So we, you say, well, we're not anti-Semitic. We're just, if I say I'm an Israelite, that doesn't make me anti-Semitic. I just made a statement. I'm an Israelite, you know? I can be who the, who the hell I want to be. Now, now, who you say you are, you got to prove who you are. So, like I said, they, they can be Semitic, they can be Jewish. We're not Jewish. We, we're Yahweh. You know, we're not Semitic. We're uh, Shemitic. And if we want to, and if they tell you that, oh, Semitic means anybody to come from Sem, I'll say, well, you mean Shem? No, it's pronounced Sem. Okay, what does the word Sem mean? It means, they should tell you it means name or even put, because you put your name. You know, you, you uh, have a contract before you, you put your signature. So the word there is put or name. Or that's where you get the word signet. So, so these people, so if they say, well, it means name or put, you say, does it mean name? Yes, it means name too. So you say, okay, well, when you call on the most high in the scriptures, when you look up the word, the tetragrammaton, you, uh, what do you say? And I did this before. I did this more than once. We used to bring out the Torah and we used to encounter them small hats, the, the orthodox ones. And I used to open up the Torah and go to the name of the most high. And I say, what does that say? And they would say, Hashem. I said, that's not Hashem. That's not Hashem. I said, well, why do you say Hashem? He said, because our rabbis told us to say, when you see that word, when you see the tetragrammaton, grammaton, say Hashem, which means Ha is the, and Shem or Shem is the name. So the name of uh, the, uh, the younger Shem or Shem, of Noah, it means name. That's all it means, it means name. So this big deal about your anti-Semitic, well, how can we be anti-Semitic when we're Shemitic ourselves? And the way to pronounce it is, correct way to pronounce it is Shemitic. So that's a play on words. Anyway, please forgive me. I'm going, I'm all over the place. But anyway, uh, I was watching a video that was put up by, let me see if it's still up there. Bear with me for a minute. And you guys that say, well, I don't do videos because I, I don't have no topic in mind. And you know what? If you don't have any topic in mind, that means the Most High is not feeding you. That means you're not of the elect. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You're going to do a video. You're going to go out speaking. You're going to do this work because the, the, the spirit is in you and it's going to come out of your belly. Um, it's going to like rivers of, of living water, I'm merely paraphrasing St. John 7. So you guys, and I said this yesterday, you guys out there that have gotten to this, you were excited, excited about it. I'm talking about as far back as the One West days, because you got a lot of these individuals on YouTube when we first came out in 06, 2006, you had the, the two maybe three, but I remember because I was considering whether to go on YouTube or not. But YouTube was like dogs doing dog tricks, changing your baby's diet. It was like, and it was like only like 10 minutes long. It was grainy. 
So YouTube really wasn't all that popular. So I said, well, I'm not going to put this precious knowledge on a YouTube page. This is like TikTok. TikTok is like a lot of silly shit. So that's how I saw YouTube. So, but I, I did remember. Uh, so if you have an argument about who was on YouTube first, IUIC or uh, GMS, of course it was IUIC. I don't even think, well, they had the organization since 2003, but they were on there. They didn't do too many videos. It was very, very small. They didn't have the fancy garments. They were mostly on uh, Eastern Parkway on uh, Utica by the Big Bank. I know that area because I had a camp right there. We used to be out there. That's uh, Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn. So you had uh, Bishop Nathaniel and you had uh, you had uh, Yawasop, Bishop Yawasop as, as his title is. And then you may you might have had maybe another, well, you had Barack Shaw. <clears throat> and basically what they did was they would go out and all you would get was a 10 minute video. It would be, it'll be 10 minutes. And uh, people would say, well, where's part two? Where's part three? Where's the rest of it? And this is a fact. They will give you a website, come to the website and uh, you go to the website and they try to sell you breakdowns, which was clear, which, which is wickedness. Scriptures clearly state uh, buy the truth and sell it not. In other words, don't put a price that price tag price tag on breakdowns. Okay, well, Revelation one, that's only five dollars. But Revelation eighteen, now that's twenty five dollars. In other words, you're putting a price tag on this truth. So you might say, well, wait a minute, you guys, be, people be sending you money, you know, tied to donation or whatever the thing is. Well, yeah, well that's scriptural. But if somebody sends you a dollar, you can't bitch at them. Donation is a donation, bro. When you go to like, a, like for example, when I first used to take these brothers, I'm going to get to the subject. When I first uh, took back in one West days, we used to go, some days we used to go to the museum. We would go to uh, the, uh, the, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Met, Metro, Metropolitan Museum of Art which to me, that's the greatest, to me, that's the, not the Guggenheim <laughs> down up the street, but uh, the Met, because you had all, man, that's, that's a great, that is a great freaking museum, man. We used to go there all the time. I remember even Yeshia, Yeshia said, where, where, where are y'all going? I'm going down to the museum. Okay, I'm coming with y'all. And even, I, I believe, I, yeah, are we are, yeah. Because when we used to go out, Ariar would come to the school, we'd be getting ready to go, and, and Ariar would say, Wait, yo, where y'all going? So we're going to the museum. He said, I'm coming with y'all. So, okay, yeah, well, come on, you know? And Ariar's very, you see him in the museum, his face would light up. He'd see the different things, and it'll get you to, you know, to talk about it, you know? And we did it when um, the elder from uh, Hawaii. Yeah, Howard the Bar came out. He came out and um, he was out out there for uh, from Saturday and Sunday. So he was still there Sunday. So I said, "Oh, we got to get we got to get together with the brother because he's here." So I called up uh, Apostle Bar and Apostle Ryan Blob, and I said, "Yeah, I'm going." I didn't tell them. I didn't invite them, so to speak. I just said, "Oh, I'm going to go out with them brothers to the museum." So they said, "We're going too." <laughs> you know, so that video has been taken down based upon our old pages. But so we went to the museum and uh, I remember Howard the Bar, his face really lit up, man. We went first went into the Egyptian section and he was get, he was all excited, man. He, oh, man, this is great. Then we went to the other. It's, he, did, he didn't know the museum, but he was comparing it to the museum. There's a museum in Hawaii. Well, there's a museum, blah, blah, blah. He'll speak on it. <clears throat> So he was all excited and it got the other brothers to be excited too. And then I showed him, because I can navigate through that museum. I only go to a few different places. I go to the Egyptian section, I go to the Middle Eastern section, I'll go to the Knights. Those are the main sections that I'll go to. And, uh, you know, it's good, it's good to go to museums because it, 
it opens your eyes and it, it shows you that Esau, see what we teach in the scriptures, like we're going to the Assyrian empire. Well, if you go to the Middle Eastern section of the, uh, the Met, you have the griffin. The griffin, when you, when you read about Daniel uh, chapter 7, when you read, read about the lion with we, eagle's wings standing up upon his, upon his feet, well, there's an actual gigantic wall carving, release, whatever you want to call it. And it's actually, they claim it's actually dug up from uh, the Assyrian Empire. So I would show them brothers, I would say, I would say, see, that's, uh, that's the Assyrians. And the Assyrians became known as the Babylonians, which by the way, the, ba the Babylonian Empire were not Kushites. The seven got it wrong. High priest Ariel got it wrong. He would say, well, the Assyrians ruled and the, ba the Kushite took over. And the reason why he said that, because of Nimrod, he was the first king of uh, Babylon, which he was a Kushite which was a Hamite, but they were Assyrians. You go into the history and the various kings, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, Bel, what was he? You got the Bel, Belteshazzar. You got, Dan, you had a name which is similar to Belteshazzar. This is Bel, Belteshazzar, Belte, Belteshazzar. Um, so that was one of the rulers of uh, Babylon. I forget the name, Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar. I mean, I can easily go to it. But I'm not. Somebody help me out. So I don't got to look it up. But I always get those two mixed up. But that was the name of ba Babylonian name of, of uh, Daniel. Either it was Belteshe Belteshazzar or Belteshazzar. Just like the three boys, they say the Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo, they did, that's what, that wasn't their name. That wasn't their name. Those were Babylonian names. Just like we got these government names today. Anyway, like I said, when you go to the museum, it's the, the relics are there. That's uh, that's Elder uh, Malcolm's word, the relics. He likes to use that, relics. Um, so they're there, so they dug this, this stuff up. So that opens up, your, that builds your faith because you're reading in the scriptures and then you're actually seeing the relics and the artifacts and the things that were dug up, which confirm that, wait a minute, the script, the Bible is true. And right next to, right down the way, maybe 10 steps away, you have a, 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 map, a map of the ancient world, and they mention all the ancient biblical places. So Esau knows that the people, the characters in the Bible are true. They know that there was an Abraham, an Isaac, a Jacob, an Israel, an Edom. They know who Edom is. They know everything, man. They pretend like they don't what's an Edomite. They know they know it. They've been knew what the Edomite was before we knew the, who the Edomites were. They didn't know that we were Israelite before we found out that we were Israelites. Anyway, let me just go into this Cambridge Bible uh, for schools and colleges, since I normally go there. Um, let me see. Anyway, this is Daniel 12, verse 1. It says, and, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great uh, prince which standeth for the children of thy people, which are the Israelites. And, um, and there shall be a time of trouble, and we're coming to the time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people, the Israelites, shall be delivered. How are they going to be delivered? This is the fulfillment of uh, Revelation chapter 12. So now I got to go into Revelation chapter 12. I got to do a breakdown on that. Or somebody else got it. If they beat me to it, go ahead and do it. You guys stop waiting, man. Stop waiting and do the work. You in this thing to eat this roll and go out and teach the sons of Israel. Not you, you join the camp. You, you, you wallflower the camp. And there's a lot of wallflowers in the New York camp. We just got, I just got to tell it like it is. The brothers that's always raising their hand and always ready to do a breakdown, it's a, it's a handful of brothers, maybe, maybe 10 brothers at most. A lot of you guys, and y'all tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. And I'll say I'm sorry for saying that. You tell me that I'm lying. 
You get guys that are shift. Just look up the word shiftless. They're in one ship. They're in. They're in. Um, they're in. Uh, you know, if you drive a uh, a standard shift, a lot of y'all don't know how to drive a standard. But I drove. I had cars that had many cars that had standard shifts. You had first gear, right? You can only go move so fast. Uh, I think maybe twenty miles. And then you got to shift the second gear. Now the automatics, automatic shifts by itself. You feel the shift as you're driving. You feel the shift. So I can go. I, look, I can go from uh, fifth gear, sixth gear. And I can pull it right. I can pull it down to second gear, and I can I can save my brakes that way. But shiftless meaning you go in the first gear. But you can't go into second gear, or and damn, damn sure can't go into third gear. So you're moving slow. You know, you're looking a little rusty. You should, need, you need some oil. So uh, stop being shiftless, man. Ask the most side to give you that power. And every, and every, I'm renting, and everybody in GMS that you've been in this thing for at least six months, a year, two years, five years, whatever the case may be, 16 years, 15 years. Some of you guys been in this thing from the beginning. We're talking 15, 16 years, going on 17 years. I don't gotta get, I don't gotta say, oh, well, let me go check out GMS Dallas to see if they do it. I know they're doing the work. <laughs> I know they're constantly putting up videos. Some, some more than others. You know, Las Vegas uh, sit-downs. You know, Las, Ve Las Vegas. You know, the, 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 the elder, the, the head of that, he's always doing videos, man. I mean, I can go on and on. I don't got to call him and give him a, pe a, a pep talk. They just, they just do the video. They just spirit jump on him, and they just doing it. Like I said, I can mention a whole bunch of names. But there's a lot of you that ain't doing a damn thing. How many years you been this? I've been this thing for eight years. You go to the guy's page; he might have put five videos up in a year. And and be be mindful of a guy. Like I said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly, shall, that, that basically it's saying in um, Saint John seven, I believe that's thirty seven. Starting from the thirty seven verse. It said, he that believeth on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you, if, you, if, if there's nothing coming out of you, guess what? You really don't believe in your how about Shemmy how shot. And you know, we all have experienced guys that came into this thing and fall, and they were on fire in the beginning. Then they just ran out of gas. That goes into the oil. You know, you're looking, you're looking kind of rusty. Boy, you need some oil. And maybe you ain't got the oil because the most I didn't give you the oil. So you're going to be rusty. <laughs> That's a new one. You rusty brothers. Why are you calling me rusty? Because you need some oil. Well, I can't get it. Well, you because you're not of the elect. You're not, you're not going to, you're not going to make it because you got came into this thing with your best friend and your best friend excelled and you still, you know, you still stuck in first. Don't work that way, man. Don't work that way, bro. So anyway, let me read this again. And I'm glad I just called this, what did I entitle this, Daniel 12, verse, verse 1? Because ain't no way in hell I'm going to cover this whole, this whole chapter. But I may do a thing and just go straight into it and break the whole chapter down. And at that time, shall Michael stand up what time period is this, is this talking about? It's talking about the deliverance that's getting ready to happen in our time. So what other places is found in the scriptures? Revelation chapter 12. And it's ironic that you got Daniel chapter 12 and that Revelation chapter 12. So the most I've given you a clue right there. He's making it easy for you. Daniel 12 and Revelation 12. When you read about that war in heaven, that's the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation chapter 12 is referring to the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 
uh, what is that, 30 and 7. It actually says the time of Jacob's trouble. So it says, let me read it again. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, the Israelites, and there shall be a time of trouble. And that's talking about now. Now you had trouble this time, but there's going to be one time of trouble. That's, that's this time coming. You can't compare it to any, any event on the, in the history of this world, such as never was since there was a, was a nation or some time immemorial. There was a nation even to that same time, and, that, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Hey, all you can have got infiltrators and spies. We got, we got a handful of spies in a New York camp. See, I can see them. So they're not written in the book of life. You guys that came in as spies, you guys that came in as infiltrators, you are not written in the book of life. And you will be cast into the lake of fire. And may the most high have mercy on your children and your wife's soul, because you, you might... They might be casting their, you know, if, if your wife and your children are with you on that day, they're going to be they're gonna be cast in a lake of fire. They're going to be cast in a lake of fire, man. A lot of you guys don't take this thing serious, man. A lot of you Jakes out here don't take this thing serious. All these comedic dudes, these black conscious dudes, these Moors, these Islamic brothers, Farrakhan, all of them, if they don't, if they don't repent and get with the, the program, they're all going to be, they're going to be in that, that lake, they're going to be burning that lake of fire. And the lake of fire ain't no goddamn eternal hell that you're burning forever. You need to stop that with your big head, uh, Bishop Nate. Uh, Yahweh Sop, you need to fucking stand the fuck up and grow a backbone, bro. No, yeah, leave the bishop's name out your mouth. Well, maybe you should listen to what we're saying and consider it. Well, maybe what if these brothers are right? That's what you should get, consider. Guess what? Esau, the so-called white man, he's considering maybe this is this, maybe this is actually going to happen. Esau knows this, this shit is going to happen. They know they're going into captivity. They know who the fuck they are. Guys keep the shiftless spirit. I got my hands in my pocket. I'm leaning against the wall. I ain't got no topics in myself. The spirit ain't on me. The spirit ain't never been on you, nigga. Somebody got to put a fucking knife to your throat to get you to do a breakdown. Hey, there's, there's, there's only one gear in this thing. is maximum overdrive. Is maximum overdrive. Either hot or cold. I'm ranting, but that's all right. If you don't like it, you can move on. You don't like my rant, you can move on. I remember, and I say I bring this story story up once in a while, that we had the, the camp together with like 50, 50, 51, 52 two, uh, people in my camp. The only ones that remain in the camp um, that are still here that you know is uh, Apostle Gabor and um, uh, Bishop Nathanyalaga because he was in my camp. Oh, and he used to bitch. You want to talk about a bitch? He, that dude used to bitch. He used to complain about every goddamn thing. Give me a second here.
Yeah, excuse me. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's see what the the uh and I see I gotta go into the full Daniel chapter 12. If somebody does it before me, they do it before me. Ain't no big deal. Which gonna which is gonna lead me to uh Revelation chapter 12. We gotta know these these um prophetic breakdowns. That we call them breakdowns. Esau calls them interpretations. Okay, Cambridge Bridge. Uh, Cambridge Cambridge Bible for Schools and Colleges, uh, Michael the Great Prince, i.e. the patron angel of Israel. There it goes. There it goes. So it's not talking about replacement theology as vocab teaches or uh, what is it called? Um, there's another uh, uh, what the hell is the other term? Supersessionism. See, when you read about the 144,000, that's the, not even talking about the Israelites. How do we know that? Because it says Joseph. Well, you know, and scholars will tell you, anytime you come across the word Joseph, it's, it's referring to, it's interchangeable with Ephraim. Another name for the tribe of Ephraim is also known as Joseph, of the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribe of Ephraim. So you're playing games, and you're losing, you're losing too. Michael, the great prince, i.e. the patron angel of Israel. Let's see what Daniel 10 and 13 says. Uh, but uh, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia uh, which stood me one in 20 days but but see Michael one of the uh, chief princes uh, came to to help me and I his letters are so small and I remained there with the king of Persia now this is what I want to do let me do this I want to actually go here. Why did I do that? Uh, no, I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. Then 10 and, 10 and what is that, 13? All right. Uh, let me go. Okay, commentary. But the prince of the king of Persia, let's go to the commentaries. Okay, let's go to Matthew Henry. I want to go down to 13. Do it this way. Okay, it's not helping me. Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. Yeah, Jacob looking crazy as hell back then. The niggas got with these crazy fucking locks. You look crazy as hell, man. Okay, let me see here. Go to commentary.
Okay, commentary. Daniel 10, verse 13. I just want to want to see what they say about the prince. Thirteen uh, a position for twenty one days. The prince, i.e., the patron angel of Persian, and you sooner the prince came in Persia. Uh, the doctrine to we. Trace. I mean, what, why don't you just give me the straight up answer, man? Try it this way, bear me for a minute. Let's see what comes up. Standard interpretation of Prince referred to here is as found in most commentaries is that the uh, rep represent represents uh, the guardian angel of Persia, who is the king of Persia according to the Bible. Bible. Let's see what this says. Okay, so it's saying it's Cyrus the Great. Which that's the first thing that came to mind, Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great was the founder of the Achaemenid Empire, the king of Persia from 559 to 530 BC. He is he is venerated in the in the Hebrew Bible as Cyrus the Messiah for conquering Babylonian and liberating the Israelites to be were Israel, were Judah from captivity. And the reason why I had to do all of this is, well, the, the, the most high wanted to, the Lord wanted to change his mind, but he had a strong mind. So let's go back to 13. I'm, I'm spreading this out. So if you're if you're scholarly minded, you know, you you'll follow me. If not, you just go go ahead and move on to something else. I really don't care at this. I'm not concerned about the numbers at this point in time. So you guys ask us a question. We the ones that if we don't have the answers, we gotta search the answers. We might be there for an hour searching through different things. 
So we always thought that that was Cyrus, but I wanted to sh show you what the scholars say. They gave you a whole lot of uh, filler, you know, a whole lot of rice, no meat, very little meat. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, according to the scholars, is uh, Cyrus uh, the Great. Great. He was the one that said, um, and why did, he, why did he say we're going to finance the rebuilding of uh, Yerushalayim or the temple? Because the Most High put in his mind. He had to work on his mind. Withstood me one and 20 days, but lo, Michael wanted, and who's talking here? Yahweh Shai is talking here. He said, but lo, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, he's Who's you got Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, you got the Holy Spirit, and you got Michael. Then you got the other three archangels. Then you got the rest of the angels. So there's a there's an order in heaven. Came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Now I am come to make the under make the understand. What shall befall thy people? Who is thy people? The Israelites in the what? In the latter days. Sometimes this is talking about now. Sometimes this is talking about a a uh, event that's going to happen that that happened uh, going to happen fifty years from now, or hundred years from now, or two weeks from that point. So it's just because it says latter days, it doesn't always talking about. It's not always talking about this time. It says, for yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. And then sh I shut up. And behold, one like uh, the similitude of the Son of Man touched touch my lips. Then I, that's what happened to Isaiah. I opened my mouth and spake, but said unto him that stood before me, O oh, my Lord, Lord meaning Adewanya, my superior, not Yahweh, but my superior. By the vision, by the vision, my sorrows are turned unto me, and I have retained no strength. I got weak. When my, my, my woman used to always get visions, and she used to be weak as hell. Every time she got a, a dream, which is a vision, she used to get weak as hell. She said she would get up, go to the bathroom, come back, wake up from the dream go back to sleep and a dream would pause and then the dream would start all over again from where it stopped. That's not a dream. That's a vision. That's a vision. She, don't, she ain't been getting no visions. She, had, she hadn't got vis visions in a couple of years, but she used to always get visions. If she starts getting visions back, I know the Most High is saying something. I'm all over the place, but please forgive me. So let's come back over here. Stand up as champion and defender, uh, Daniel 11 and 1, which is talk, what, that's talking about a particular Daniel, cha cha Daniel chapter 11 and 1, which Dan Daniel chapter 11 has nothing to do with prophecies that are going to be fulfilled in this time. If somebody says, oh, well, Daniel eleven twenty seven is talking about the Antichrist, that's going to give everybody the chip. No, Daniel chapter 11 already took place. Daniel chapter 8 already took place. Even, even uh, the apostle Ramla mentioned that. He, he mentioned Daniel chapter 8 because some brothers have used certain passages in Daniel chapter 8 and, and apply it to what's happening now. So we say you got uh, to qualify it. Daniel 8 took place already. Daniel 7, Daniel, most of Daniel 7 took place. So some of Daniel 7, I would say the first uh, what is it, eight verses, seven, eight verses? Give me a second. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? Okay, Daniel. Well, you. It says, uh, hitherto, the power of the prince of Greece has been unchecked. Now Michael imposes and, and, and interposes for this people's final deliverance. I mentioned the Greeks that show you that they don't know. They don't know.
they're pretty these guys, these commentaries are pretty much like Bishop Nathaniel. He's he'll be on course, he'll be hitting points, and all of a sudden he'll go left. Then he'll get back on track, then he'll go left again. It says for standing eye, he uh protects uh a time of trouble. So let's see what they say about this. We already know what this means or should know what this means. Everybody in Israel has been in this thing for about six months to a year. That's how much time you've been in this thing. You should know Daniel chapter 12. If you don't know, you're watching the video, you better ask somebody. The expression seems borrowed from a Jeremiah 30 and 7. And we all know what Jeremiah says. But we should know. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Who shall be saved? Jacob. Jacob represents all of Israel. Uh, uh, where also where also Israel is spoken at, of as saved from it. These are the commentators, and they know that this is talking about a future prophecy that's getting ready to happen. All hell is going to break loose. You're going to experience uh, uh, 2nd Ezra 15 and 2nd Ezra 16, and then we're going to be delivered. It says the righteous shall scarcely make it. We're going to be saved from the hairs of our chinny chin chin such as never was since. So he gave you a bunch of example, uh, precepts here. Mark 13 and 19, Matthews, Matthews 24 and 20, Matthews 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation such at the time of Jacob's trouble, such as was not since the beginning of the world. Now the word did, word, the word for world there in the is the Greek cosmos, but it's actually talking about the history of the world in the oik of many sense. To this time, no, 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 nor ever shall be. So people, scholars say, well, that's talking about 70 AD. No, 70 AD was a time of Jacob's trouble, but that was not the time of Jacob's trouble. That was not the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12, verse one. Shall be delivered, the period of deliverance uh, here spoken of is the same as the period of redemption described in Daniel 7 8. You got it right. Daniel, the same as Daniel 7 uh, 18, Daniel 7 26 to 20, 26 to 27, Daniel 9 24. Not talking about Daniel 9 24. Not talking about that. Daniel 9 20, Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 took place already. So let's look at Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High, which are the Israelites, shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom. Whose kingdom? Esau's kingdom. The Babylonians went down in what way? Because another kingdom, another nation took them over and said, okay, this is now the, uh, it's just like a, a store. You got a, a store where you, where you buy a certain foods, X, Y, Z burgers, right? And they'll say, um, It'll, it'll, it'll be another company. It'll be ABC Burgers. Um, but you know that that was formerly XYZ. Another burger company took it over. Or you see a sign that says under new management. Because if you got a company going, the owners of the company don't work. They'll, they'll hire a management team. So sometimes the management team, they don't like what they're doing. They're slacking. They get rid of that man management team and they hire a new management team. So so uh, Babylon was under new management, but it was called the, uh, the Medio Persian Empire. Okay, Daniel, Daniel uh, 7, 26, should start, should start at 25. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away the, the, his dominion to, to cons consume and to destroy it to the end so whose dominion is going to be, whose power is going to be taken away? Esau's power. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Written in the book, Psalm 69, 28. Let's see what that says. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and 
not be written with the ooh, who's who's gonna what people are gonna be uh, blot out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. You're gonna have Israelites that are not gonna be written in the in the book in the uh, the book of the living or the book of life or the Lamb's book of life. I'm not that familiar with the scripture, but this is something that we should remember. To wipe the dust off this bad boy. Psalms 87, verse 6. The Lord shall count when he writes upon the people that this man was born there. Yeah, everything is on is by record. Let's see what Exodus 32, verse 32 me says. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray you, this is Moses speaking, I pray you out of, out of your book, which you have written. You better, hey, be careful what you wish for, because you may get it. it, it uh, Moses is playing with fire. He's playing with fire here. Talking about, well, you, you're going to save them. Don't save me either. Okay, okay. Bye, Moses. Poof, you're out of there. So let me, let, me, let me go to that to show you that that's Moses talking. Exodus 32. Let me come on up. But Moses says, uh, consecrated yourself today of the Lord, even every man upon his son, uh, 31st. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, ye have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up unto Yahweh. That's how you know it's Yahweh, all, all caps. Preadventure, I shall make an atonement for your sins. That's why we have the Day of Atonement. And Moses, Masha, returned unto Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. So he saw the shit that was happening and, uh, and Moses got pissed off. What does the account say? He broke up the, uh, the commandments and he made them drink. I believe that's in the same chapter. I'm not going to go stretch it out that far. I'm getting ready to close. It said, yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Because the Most High said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do away with these people. I'm going to bring you a new group of people that's going to follow you. Well, why did they go off in the first place? The Most High made them go off. And that kills that bullshit that Bishop made his teaching about the ones of our people that don't are not right with the Most High going to burn the hell. Well, wait a minute. The Most High set them up to burn the hell if there was a hell. Because what, why did you sin? Because the Most High programmed you to sin. The Most High programmed you to go off. Why is a Jake man or a Jake woman a mo? Because the Most High made them a mo. So in the kingdom of heaven, are we going to sin? No. Nope. Why? Because the Most High is going to reprogram us to do the to do the laws the right way. You can take a pit bull, and you can make a pit bull a mean pit bull or a nice friendly pit bull that plays with children. It's, it, it, it's all how you how you program the dog. Even a mean pit bull, you can train him to be nice, you know, or you can train another pit bull to be a killer. It says, uh, yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. And Yahweh said unto Moses, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So we were supposed to, why are we written in the book? Because we had a Savior. That's what the Savior was all about. Would the, did Moses not say, let me come back to this. If Moses did not say uh, atonement, 31st, ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto Yahweh, pre-adventure, 
I shall make an atonement for your sins. Well, Yahweh Shai made the ultimate atonement for the sins of Israel. Thirty-four verse. Therefore, now, now go lead, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angels shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. That's talking about the wilderness, and the angel is a big, gigantic ship. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the, the calf which Aaron made because Aaron went off. So was Aaron Aaron is not going to be saved? According to this, Aaron made the calf and he said, oh, I didn't the people maybe made the calf and not so many words. So that means Aaron's going to go to hell. Don't listen to that bullshit that IUI is telling you about. There's certain Israelites that's going to burn in hell forever. If you're an Israelite in your spirit, if you're an uh, Israelite according to the spirit, meaning your father is an Israelite. Your father's father is an Israelite. And the list goes on and on. Your father's father's father, which goes all the way back 2,000 years, 3,000, 4,000. All the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are not going to go to hell. First of all, there's no such thing as a, 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 a eternal hell that you burn forever. Esau's not going to hell forever. This Jacob's not going for hell. Not, not one Jacob. Every Jacob's going to be right. I should turn away on God and live from Jacob. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 11. Uh, what is that? Verse 26. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.